Well, good evening, everybody. I'm doing this video as a request from some of the viewers, uh, some of the members on coalpale.com. They wanted to see uh, the fire tending, and I'm going to give you, you guys an update on how this is working for us. It's currently 11 degrees outside up here, and my house is at 76 degrees right now, and it's pretty well even. It's a, about a 1,500 square foot ranch house. We've got a pretty wide open living room and kitchen. I've got really tall ceilings in here. I do not have my ceiling fan running. Um, I've noticed it heats better without it, which goes against everything I've ever done running wood. And I guess to start off, that's one of the, uh, the big things I can say. I've been burning wood my whole life. I've been cutting, splitting wood since I was big enough to do it. I've been hauling wood, stacking wood. A good portion of my time in the spring goes to gathering firewood for the following year. Of course this year with all the barn work, the farm work, and my job, I was not prepared for winter this year. Now I've been interested in doing this for a few years, um, just plain didn't have the money to go buy a coal stove. Like I said in the previous video, thankfully a viewer who watches the channel, Mr. Loyal Star, wonderful guy, he came up, he had two of them, he was willing to trade for some parts. So last video you saw we made the trip to Maine, got the stove, brought it back, refurbed it, and got it running. So I'll tell you some key differences I've noticed between this and wood. And I want to talk a little bit about some environmental differences because I've had a couple of comments on that from people who say we're going to kill our lungs, that we're contributing to global warming. You know, we're going to get a lot of that. When you're talking fossil fuels, there people feel very strongly about that. So we're going to get into some of the myths that I've learned. Now, I'm not an expert on any of it, but I will tell you, I, I'm one of those people, I do my homework before I say anything on here. I try to. When I was younger, I had a habit of not doing my homework and talking out of my ass extensively. You develop what they call a buffalo mouth and a hummingbird ass. You get so full of it that... You just can't get rid of it, and I used to be very guilty of that. Now, when you're young, you don't think of those things. You just you have an opinion, you put it out there, and it doesn't mean shit because you don't know what the hell you're talking about sometimes. And that was I was that guy at one time. So anyway, the big differences between our wood stove and this. This house is maintained in the mid-70s since I put this in. It has not dropped below 73 degrees in this house, no matter how cold it's been outside. It's gotten pretty warm. Sunday was 40 degrees out. Now we're back into just about single digits. So it was in the 80s in here Sunday, but since we've dropped down again, we've had another Arctic front come through from our Canadian neighbors a couple miles away from here. Blasting down here with the wind and the cold, it's still maintaining beautifully. Now, big differences. With the wood stove, I was putting wood in it every two to three hours. I had an old wood stove. It wasn't very efficient. A lot of the newer wood stoves are much better, but they're also very expensive. The, the temperature would drop really fast on the wood stove. If the fire went down, you lost flame in the fire, it would drop like a rock. And when the wood stove dropped like a rock, living out here in a field, this is a modern house. I built it 10, 11 years ago, but it doesn't seem to matter how well you build it unless you spray foam the whole thing, which I do not like because your house does not breathe with that stuff. But... When that wood stove dropped off like that, the house would cool down rapidly. I'm talking within, I mean rapidly. So overnight the fire dies down, didn't matter how much I stuffed into it, didn't matter if I got up in the middle of the night and put wood in it. Fire would die down by the time we got up to get ready for work in the morning. I'd get up a lot of mornings, this house would be like 58 degrees. When it's good and cold out one morning this winter, when it was 30 below out, I got up to a 42 degree house. That was it for me. I said, I, I've had enough of this. I was either going to turn the furnace back on, which I hate to do because propane is clean, but it doesn't have the BTU output of a lot of other fuels, but it is very clean. It is efficient fuel, so there's nothing wrong with that. But with this stove here, right now, you can see it behind me. This stove has been running on this load since 7 o'clock this morning was the last time I tended this fire. It is almost 10 o'clock here tonight, so it's gone almost 15 hours, and I have a lot of life left in this fire. 
And the stove top right now is right at 700 degrees, which is another odd thing that I have noticed with the stove. When that stove top up there gets that hot, I'm not putting the fuel or the heat out like I am when it's running at like 500. So the coal bed's letting a little more air up through it and it's driving the heat to the top of the stove. When everything's just right with this, the all the heat's coming from the bottom of the stove. Now this stove has baffles in it. There's one down this side, another one down this side, and there's one down the back. It has a bypass damper so it blocks off the chimney most of the way. What happens is this thing recycles all its gases back through the coal bed. It drives the heat down to the bottom of the stove and it radiates really well. I have noticed with this stove that I do not need to run the fans to keep the house warm. The ceiling fan's been shut off. Um, I've always had a fan behind the wood stove. I have not needed it with this because the back of the stove actually stays relatively cool and I can usually keep put my hand on it. And that's some of the things that are very impressive to me. Now this stove right now is running at 700 degrees on the top of it. I could put my hand on that single wall chimney and leave it there. You know, it feels like a, uh, it almost feels like a boiler pipe. When our wood stove was running 300 degrees, you could not put your hand on that pipe without getting burnt. That's just going to show how much of that heat was actually going up in the chimney, how much energy we were actually wasting. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that coal is the environment's best friend. There's a lot of studies that show it isn't, but it is not as dirty, it is not as harmful as a lot of people would have you think. A lot of people think in terms of the soft coal that has a high sulfur content, has a high particulate content when it's burning. From what I've seen of it, and I could be wrong, you folks who are familiar with it, Dave W. is a very good source over there in England who grew up around it where they'd mix, I was reading some of his comments earlier today, they'd mix the they mix the coal, the anthracite, and the bituminous together. But we're burning anthracite. Anthracite is a very, very low sulfur content fuel. So that means you're not contributing much to putting sulfur in the atmosphere, which is going to give you sulfuric acid eventually and lead to acid rain, which is no good. Like I said, this is all information you can find from reliable sources on the web. This isn't from a coal mine propaganda site. It's, it's information that's out there and if you're willing to look for it, you can find it. Another interesting thing, one ton of anthracite coal puts out about 25 million BTUs, a little bit over. 1,000 gallons of fuel oil puts out just over 5 million. A similar unit of natural gas puts out 2 million. From what I was reading, anthracite is one of the cleanest burning fossil fuels that you can use. Now there are some environmental impacts that are going to come with it, obviously mining, things like that. But there's a whole lot, there's a lot of uh, impact that comes from anything you do. You cut a tree down, you're taking away some of the ability for that tree to recycle the CO2 in the atmosphere. So your carbon footprint, you know, a big buzzword these days you're making it a little higher. But you get an oil spill like the one in the Gulf of Mexico a few years ago. Look at the impact that had on the environment. You turn a light on in your house, a light switch. That electricity is getting generated somewhere. And there's not as much wind, solar, and, and hydropower as people would like to think out there. A lot of your power plants still getting made from coal. So I'm not sitting here trying to tell you that this is the cat's ass for environmental friendly but if you do your research and you do your homework and you actually look the stuff up on reliable websites, you'd be surprised at how clean the anthracite is compared to your other fossil fuels and what you're burning and actually how much energy you actually get from it. So, anyway, without further ado, let's get to the tending of this. Um, like I said we're going on uh, 15 and a half hours right now, or 15 hours. We haven't done anything with it. I haven't adjusted it in the back. I haven't done anything with it. It's one of those things that once I've set it, it's good to go for the entire day. And that is really nice. My wife is home with a lot of kids that she babysits during the day. And 
for her to not have to do anything with this is a big relief because the wood stove, I mean, the wood stove, it was a constant loading, getting the firewood, everything else. So this is a really nice switch for the last few days. It's been awesome. But I know I've rambled on quite a bit here, so let's get to the tending of the fire. Okay, so the first thing we do, this has a bypass damper in it, like I mentioned earlier. It sends the hot gases and everything around the outside of the stove, on the inside of it, but on the outside walls of it, back up through the cold bed. So the first thing I have to do is open that bypass damper because I want that draft to pick up. That way any, uh, any fumes or any of that, it's going to suck it up the chimney and not into the room. And believe it or not, you can actually watch it when you're loading it. I'll tell you another thing. No smoke with this whatsoever. When I load this thing up, I went outside this morning after I loaded it up, there was not a drop of smoke that came out of my chimney. So that's a good sign. With this stove, I can't open this door or this top grate all the way, or the griddle, excuse me, without that bypass damper open. So we're going to open the bypass damper. I can open that now all the way. So we're not ready for that part yet. So the first thing I do is see if I can get you a better shot. Okay. And I'll tell you what, it gets extremely warm doing this. You're going to want a good pair of welding gloves or, you know, wood stove gloves, kind of the gauntlet style glove. So, first thing I'm going to do, open the doors. And that's what it looks like after 15 hours of continuous running. And you can see the blue flame. That should tell you right there, if you know anything about combustion, how clean that's burning. When you have blue flame like that, you're burning pretty well hydrocarbons. When you have the yellow tips and stuff like that, that's contaminants. That's stuff that you're putting into the atmosphere. That's what gets you your soot and your creosote. I've burnt some soft coal blacksmithing and get a lot more yellow and a lot more smoke on startup. Once it's going and you burn all those volatiles off, it burns more like this. But, so anyway, all I do, I don't use the shaker grate on this because I, I find this is kind of kind of like doing it this way a little bit better. And I get a little bit of ash out here on the uh, ash lip, but it's not too bad. I mean, you figure how many times a day you have your wood stove going. But, all I do, and you don't have to John Wayne it, you don't have to go Hercules on it. I just stir it up and start working that ash down into the bottom. Now you can see we're stirring this up. You can see that coal bed dropping. It's kind of neat how much that the coal holds its shape even after, uh, after it's burned up. Now I can do this a lot faster but I try to do it clean. I don't want all the dust and the fines in the house. The fly ash is quite fine in this. I notice it's a little bit finer than the uh, wood ash. And all I'm doing is just working it, getting that ash down to the bottom. This might seem like a pain in the ass to a lot of you. And it kind of is. I think some of the other Shaker Great styles are a little nicer. But it's actually a really robust Shaker Great in it. I really, I kind of like that. So I'm just kind of working it around. Nothing too fancy. I kind of do it probably a little bit more than I need to. 
but I kind of want to start with a good slate and get that ash out of there and it'll burn a hell of a lot longer for you. There's a little bit of my mess. Now when I say this is cleaner for us that we've found, I don't have the dirt and the dust from the wood in the house with this. I've noticed that uh, the furniture around the stove area isn't getting that fine layer of white dust that we get with the uh, wood stove. And this front part is where it gets kind of messy. This is where I find it's, it's messy for me. I'm trying to do this in real time so you can get an idea of what it actually takes to do it. But it's really not bad. So let's adjust the camera one more time so you can see what we have going on down below. See if we can see this well. I'll tell you what, the heat in front of this thing is intense with the doors open. It is intense. And so far I haven't gotten any ash on the floor, but I get plenty on this lip. Okay. So this will show you how much ash is actually sitting in this. You don't see any light from the fire in this right now. I don't have any glow in the ash pan underneath. So I start on one side, real gentle, just work it around. So you got a nice glow down there. See how far that, you, know, you can't really see it, but that cold bed's dropped a lot right here. That's how much ash gets in here. And I will say that that is a big thing I've noticed. There is a lot more ash with this than there was with the wood. Now I've heard different schools of thought on disposal. Some people throw it in their driveway. I don't know what other people do with it. That seems to be the big thing. Some people say it's okay to dump. Other people say it's not. So when I find out more information on that, I'll let you know. Now, what's nice about these grates, something I really like about this design, is stuff doesn't get caught in them as much because you can wiggle them around when you're working them. And uh, that's how you know when you pretty well have it. Is when you have a good bed all the way across there. And I'm still getting a fair amount of ash. I'm not dumping a ton of coals down there. Probably more than I should be, but it's not bad. 
Again, I'm probably doing this more than I need to, but I kind of like to be thorough about it. So, now you see how we have a glow all the way across there now. That's how it should look. Now, I've only been at this a few days. I haven't come across any clinkers yet. And I like to kind of scoop everything down into the pan. Now, I don't dump this... I don't dump this at night. I, uh, I wait until it's cooled down in the morning. But I could probably get two cleanings the way I'm burning this. I can get probably two cleanings before I have to dump that. But I, I'll dump it in the morning before I do this again. So, let's put this back. Close the doors. You guys on coal pail, you tell me if this is wrong. If any of you are real curious about burning coal, that is a really good place to do some research. Some guys on there that really know what they're doing. So, let's back you up a little bit. So on the bottom here, before I go to add more coal, I crack this open a little bit. Kind of get that fire going to get those coals burning. Because I want to make sure I'm putting this into a good fire. So we're going to adjust the camera once again. You see some blue flames kicking up in there. There we go. Some blue flames. Leave this open for a minute. I mean, that's plenty lively enough to add coal. That's what we're going to do. So what I've been doing, I'll throw like a two inch layer on there at first. Now, something else worth mentioning. That coal bed was up to here a few minutes ago. And it's down to about there right now. And I still have all the way down to the bottom of those grates. That's good solid coal still burning. Now that's interesting. That's after 15 hours and that's how much fuel is still left in there. The stove is rated to hold 40 pounds of coal. Probably to fill it up right now, I'll probably need 15 or 20 pounds. That's not too bad. So all we're going to do is add the coal. I'm going to open the top. Now I don't know if you can see that. A little flame's kicking up and it's actually sucking up the chimney. That's why you want to kind of get this going, get your draft going good, and that way it'll suck it up the chimney for you. Okay, let's add some let's add some coal. I'll take a few scoops. Spread it out. Coal in this bag was a little wet. That's the sizzle you're hearing. But I will tell you, I've had no fumes whatsoever in the house from doing this. Nothing. And I was really impressed with that. Because I figured if I open this door up, but I would just get a ton of fumes. But there's no smell. None of that. So you start with a couple inches. I feel like a professor tonight putting on a class. So you start with a couple inches and you wait for some flame to poke up. I like to kind of get a decent amount of flame on there. And it takes it a couple minutes. I'm trying to do this video in real time so you guys can see really how long this takes to do. So right now, and we're also explaining stuff so I'm taking a little bit longer to do it. 
but uh, right now we're at the 14, 15, uh, 14 minutes and we'll say 15 minute mark right now. No, you can't really see it on the camera, but I've got some blue flame kicking up right there. And you can see the reflection from my shirt. But you see there's no smoke. There's not a bit of smoke coming out of that at all right now. I have nothing but blue flame starting. You see that developing right there? Now you do get a little piece of coal that pops out of there once in a while. That's from the uh, that's from the steam on it, or the uh, little bit of water from the bag. And what I've been doing is I'll take a because uh, I've been buying it in bags right now to get through the season. So what I'll do is uh, I just put it in the coal bucket and let it dry all day or all night. So I'm getting good flames established there. Look how blue that is. There's no yellow. It's just it's a really nice clean flame. That right there shows you how clean this fuel is. You don't have the sulfur coming off of it. It's a low sulfur fuel. Which really that is one of the biggest environmental factors when you're burning any fossil fuel is the sulfur content. That's why you see your road diesel is low sulfur now. That sulfur is terrible stuff to put in the atmosphere. It's really bad news. But they call those the dancing blue ladies. And like I said, there is no smoke. What looks like smoke right in there, that's actually flame. And those are the gases burning off of the coal. Now another thing worth mentioning, I've got that bottom cracked. You do not want to leave it like that and I do not walk away from it like that because heh, this thing gets raging out of control. You can do some serious damage to the stove or your chimney. It gets real hot. So now that we have a good blue flame, I'm going to add a little bit more. Well, I'm kind of dainty with it. I know some people just dump the bucket right on, but I'm not used to it enough yet. Oh, there's a good shot of the flames going up the chimney. Now watch that. See that flame getting sucked right up the chimney. That's how good the draft is on that. You need really good draft to burn this stuff. Now we have a good flame. Put some more in. I'm going to be switching to pea coal once I burn all this up. And from the gentlemen who use these stoves in the homes, I'm told the pea coal is the way to go with it. And I've noticed the nut coal is a little harder to control. But it still burns pretty damn good. I'll let that do its thing. And we're almost full in there. Listen to that crackle. Very important to establish those blue flames before you start adding a bunch on top of it. Now, I'm not an expert on burning this stuff yet, so take what I say with a grain of salt and do your own research. I've told you guys that a thousand times in a lot of videos. Do your own research on whatever I'm telling you. And I don't mind opposing points of view. If somebody has an opinion or something you think I'm doing wrong, feel free to speak up. You don't have to be rude about it, but speak up. I'm more than willing to listen. That's how you learn things in life. We'll let that get going a little more and then I'm, I'll top it off for the night. Now it may seem like a lot of screwing around to people to sit here and listen, but I tell you it's actually very pleasant to tend this fire. I'm telling you, compared to the wood stove, 
and having to dick with that all the time. This is like this is like vacation for us. I mean that wood stove I pulled out of here that came out of the house I grew up in. I'd been feeding that wood stove for 28 years. And there's just no comparison. If I'd known about this a long time ago when I built this house, <laughs> I probably would have put one of these in and we would have been a lot warmer for a long time. See so yeah, how we're starting to get a good flame established in that side? Boy, that's actually showing up really well. Isn't that neat how those gases, the volatiles, just uh, burn off above the fire like that? It's pretty cool. What grown man doesn't like fire? So I'll let it go just a little bit more and then I'm going to add to it. And I don't heap it up in there. You know, the loyal said he'd fill it right up to just about the top of the bricks. And, um,. I tell you what, for us it's been working great without it. I mean, the fire I had in there tonight, it pr probably would have gone quite a bit longer, but I just want to make sure that it's good for morning. I really, I love this thing. My wife really likes it. it to get up to a house that's 70 something degrees after what we've dealt with since I built it, I, I can't get over it. And it's not like anybody's going to get hypothermia or anything waking up in a cold house, you know. It's not like that. It's, it's a comfort thing, you know. I had somebody ask me, you know, how can you do that to the environment? And the comments on the last video, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, when it's 30 below zero outside, and you just plain can't get warm, and I work outside a lot in that stuff. I, I care about the environment, but I also care about being warm. So I have a little yellow in there, and that is probably not from the coal. Once in a while you're going to get a little piece of bark or something from wherever they mine this stuff mixed in with the coal. Now I was talking to my coal dealer, and he was telling me that um, they're actually pulling a lot of this anthracite from existing mines where they used to just ignore it before they'd go after all the soft coal. So a lot of this stuff they're cleaning out from what's already been mined, which is kind of neat, and there's a huge abundant supply of it. And that's that's really good to know. It kind of puts your mind at ease a little bit more. Most of this, I guess, is coming from surface mining, which it has some it does have some impacts, but the federal regulations that they have on it, they're pretty stringent about making sure they reclaim the land, and hopefully that is done. So let's top it off. I could just dump this in here. I'd like to shovel it. I like to spread it out. I notice that if I, uh, if I have a good even bed on there, it really does well. And like I said, even with this top open, there's no fumes. There's nothing in the house that's giving off fumes. And that's really neat. So, that's it. Oops. That is tending the fire. 
And I will tell you, the way these stoves are designed, once I get this up to a certain temperature, just a piece of coal, once I get this up to a certain temperature, it just goes and it stays. That's what's really neat about it. If somebody told me that, you know, this was going to be that consistent, I would have thought they were crazy, but I've never seen such consistency out of a stove type appliance in my life. There we go. Bottoms closed up. I will give you a piece of advice. Do not walk away with that bottom open. I haven't done it yet, and I'm uh, really not looking forward to the day I forget to do that because it just won't be any good. Now my stove top right now is at 550 degrees. See the knob for the bypass damper. Now you see the fan behind there because it's such a habit. I don't have that fan running. So now we're just going to close this up. And what's going to happen now? The gases that this gives off. Keep my tripods busted so I keep dropping the leg out. You see how that flame's getting kind of pulled to the side a little bit now? It's actually starting to recycle through the baffles and up through the cold bed. It's really neat. And that, uh, that bypass damper closes off, pretty well closes the flue right off. I mean, I'm sure it's not complete closure, but it's quite a bit. So I was told that... I'll get a light on this so you can see it. You see down there where that shaker grate handle goes through? I'm going to get a new one. They're about 16 bucks. I found them online. But that hole right there should not be like that. It's a little wallowed out. There should be a grommet in there, I'm told. But what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it tonight after I shut the camera off, I'm going to take some refractory cement I have. It's, it's about like putty. And I'm just going to put some in there, and then once it dries and hardens, I'll uh, put a little black on it. Because I found, um, like I said, I like knifing it better than I like shaking it down. I seem to have better results, and I don't feel like I'm... I don't feel like I'm uh, going to break the stove, you know, because you have to be pretty aggressive with the shaker grate. So, anyway. Well, I hope that helps answer some of the questions some of you have had on this. Um, and I hope the boys on uh, coalpail.com can see what I'm doing well enough. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that's the proper way to do it. Like I said, you do your own research. That's just how I'm doing it and it's working for us so far so we are a few days in my house has never been more comfortable and when you live in a cold ass climate it is nice to wake up to a, a warm house and i gotta be honest with you i like it enough to where i probably won't go back to firewood in the house now something drastic changes or something like that yeah i might but um do some research on the environmental impacts i, I like i said i've had some comments you know, and you folks are welcome to your opinion. There's nothing wrong with that. Diversity, you know, of opinion makes the world go around because not all of us are right all the time. That's just the way it is. But do some research into it. You know, don't just look for things that you want to hear. Look for the stuff that will challenge your viewpoint and maybe make you think. Not enough of that going on in this world today. You know, we're all so hopped up on my way is right, your way is wrong, and I don't want to hear about it that... You know, world's turning into a shit place because of it. But do some research. There's some good, there's some really good websites out there that are fairly well accredited, where you can uh, get some information. Just type in uh, environmental impact of burning anthracite coal, and do a Google search, and you'll have a lot of stuff pop up. Um, but yeah, I really like it. It uh, it burns very clean that I've I've found and. And remember, I, I deal with combustion for a living. I know what a clean fire looks like and what a dirty fire looks like. So this is kind of neat for me. Probably at some point I do have a combustion analyzer that does anthracite coal at some point down the road here before the winter's done. 
We'll throw the analyzer on it and see what this thing actually burns for efficiency because I'm kind of curious to see what it does. And uh, that's that. So anyway, thank you for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you on the next one.